Mark in Edmonton, Canada writes, Paul, I've got a bit of a cable challenge <laughs> that I've been thinking about. Don't we all have a cable challenge? Oh my goodness. Um, my DAC and preamp are far apart, about 25 feet, and I'm using a long interconnect to bridge that distance. Now I know that cables all have some level of capacitance, and over that length, it's bound to add up. What I'm trying to understand is this. How much should I really be worried about that capacitance? Am I losing detail or high frequency performance because of that long run? And if I am, what can I do about it? Well, first off, as I have said numerous times, be sure you're using, if you can, a balanced interconnect. Balanced interconnects will solve a whole bunch of problems. Noise, oh, uh, anything happening in common, and that includes distortion, things happening in the cable. Life will be a lot better if you use a balanced cable. Now, capacitance. Well, it is true that there is a certain amount of capacitance, usually measured in picofarads per foot, on a cable and that capacitance will act as what we would call a low pass filter, meaning it will pass the lower frequencies and not so much the highs. And the amount of low passing or the reduction of highs that we might experience due to that capacitance depends of course the type of cable, the length of the cable and all of that. My guess is that you're probably going to be just fine with 25 feet. I think I've used 50 without any degradation whatsoever. So the, again, if you're using a quality cable, now I use AudioQuest, as most of you know, I like AudioQuest a lot, and they have fairly low capacitance. Don't know what it is, but probably, I don't know, on the order of 20 picofarads a foot, something like that, so you're looking at what would that be, 500 picofarads? I, I just don't think that a 500 picofarad you know, filter is going to do a whole lot to wreck your high frequencies. I don't think you'd even notice it. But do pay attention to the type of cable and, um, and just do your best. I, I really don't think you're going to have a problem with it, though. I think you're going to be okay. And by the way, as long as we are sitting here, I thought it might be interesting to show you what we call a mule. This, this is <laughs> an engineering mule. So this is a, a circuit that uses new GAN FETs. It's an amplifier, power supply, power amplifier. This is a complete stereo 200 watt <laughs> amplifier. But notice how it's on a, a piece of scrap board, right? And then everything, here's the Here's the 110 volt plug. I mean, talk about fancy schmancy, right? Here are the output connectors. Here are the input connectors. And the reason I'm showing this to you is just, it, it, we're evaluating this. I want to listen to it and see if this new technology has anything to offer us. And instead of building it into a chassis, which you might think that we do, we, we don't. We just hook it up to a, a, a piece of scrap wood put all these cables on it and go give it a listen. If it's worthy, if it's something that we actually want to use because it sounds really good, oh, then we can start putting it into a chassis and having the benefits of the metal case and all of that stuff. But hey, for right now, this is an official engineering audio mule. <laughs> anyway, I thought you'd enjoy seeing that. All right, I will see you tomorrow. Bye.